Hey everyone, this is Shockmont Modular's new release, the Battering Ram. It's a bass drum synthesizer that isn't emulating anything. It's a totally new design by Mark Nostromo. I've been interested in Shockmont for a long time. What piqued my interest was the chess themed modules. I'm a big chess player and I thought that was kind of cool. And while some of their modules have names and kind of designs that go along with chess, like Knight's Gallop or the Clock Upon, not all of their modules are direct references to the game of chess, like the Battering Ram. But I still think it's cool because the Battering Ram kind of fits in this like medieval themed alternate chess reality world or something like that. Shockmot even means checkmate and I think it's kind of cool. Like I've said before, we don't get modules for their themes or designs most of the time. I've been trying out a lot of different percussion modules recently and a number of different kicks. And this one is slowly becoming one of my favorites. It's got a lot of personality and a lot of features that I think make it unique. One of the things that really jumps out to me when I use it is that there aren't really any sweet spots. No matter where I put the parameters on the knobs, it still manages to sound good. So many times with other kick modules, I feel like I find a really good spot and I just kind of leave it there. That's not the case with the battering room. It's really flexible. I'll play it for you in a second and you'll hear that. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of its features and show you what it can do. You'll get a sense for how it sounds and the range of sounds that it's capable of. Then I'll show off some of its fun performance features that I think sets it aside from other kick drum modules. Lastly, I'll make a couple of quick patches with some other modules so you can hear it in context. We're gonna use the inverse envelope on it to duck the base of a bass line. And then we're also going to hear it with a more complex percussion patch. I'm gonna use the Kaona modular Skippy to trigger a whole bunch of different percussive modules and sounds. You'll notice throughout this video that I'm using another one of Shockmutt's new releases, the Clock Upon MK2. It's a clock generator, and I'm planning to do a walkthrough of that module as well. So make sure you subscribe below so you get notified when that video comes out. I'll put a link up here when I'm done. Okay, that's enough talking for now. Let's jump in to the music. As I said in the intro, the battering ram has everything that you'd expect in a kick drum module. The four big knobs are drive, decay, click, and pitch. There's a smaller knob here labeled depth. There's also a button right here to choose the drive type. I'll talk about those in a second. And those are the main controls. There's some other features that I'm gonna get into in a minute, but first let's talk about the pitch. The RAM has two octaves of range, C1 to C3. I'll set it to a fairly neutral level. C1 to C3. And I've actually tested this with a tuner. It's pretty accurate. You can change the settings to five octaves though. Um, I'll go through how to do that uh, when we get to the advanced settings. For most of my purposes, I'm probably gonna leave it right where it is, but it's good to know that it's an option. You can also run the battering ram using the pitch input right here. It accepts volts per octave from zero to five volts. So it can be used for bass lines or whatever else you wanna use it for. I'll show you that in a minute as well. The decay is obviously the decay of the envelope. And of course it can be modulated or controlled through the decay input. The click and depth knobs control an envelope that impacts the pitch. The click knob controls the amount of the envelope applied to the pitch. You can also control that through CV. And the depth knob changes the decay of the pitch envelope. So there are two drives or distortions to the sound, and that's indicated here by either green or red light. And the knob, of course, will let us know how much drive is being applied. The green is a smoother sound. It's a two-stage wave folder. There's not a lot of distortion, and the red is more in your face and adds some harmonics. 
It's much more aggressive. Let's listen to a little bit of each. Let's hear it on the green setting first. Now the red setting. So let's talk about these three lights right here. These tell you the velocity of the sound, in essence, just how loud the sound is. Right now, there's nothing plugged into the velocity input, so it's gonna have maximum velocity. You can manually change that by holding down this level knob and turning the drive knob. You can also adjust the velocity using the velocity input. It accepts zero to five volts. So right now I've got a positive LFO that's going between zero and five volts and you can see it's affecting the velocity right here. One really handy feature here is that you can actually control the range of the velocity that the voltage will impact. It's almost like a built-in attenuator, but far more precise. For example, this LFO is currently making it run through the full range of from the highest velocity all the way down to the lowest. When it gets to the bottom, you can't really hear anything. Well, rather than attenuating the LFO and applying offset, we can just tell the RAM not to go below a specific level. So with the CV plugged in, we do the same process as before where we hold down the level knob and turn the drive knob. And what happens is you'll see that the left hand lights slowly turn off. And so if we set it right here, that's gonna mean that the battery RAM won't ever go down past that level. So even with the same LFO turned in right here, You can hear that the, mo the modulation is much more subtle and it never gets down to that zero point where you're not gonna hear any sound. It's a pretty cool little handy feature. So even if you never touch any of the other settings on here, the battery RAM is already just a great kick drum module and is pretty handy to use. But let's look at a few more kind of interesting ways you can use it. I was mentioning how the pitch input takes volts per octave and that you could use it as a baseline. Well, if you push this button here, then the battery RAM will accept gates rather than just triggers. If it's off, it'll treat all incoming signals as a trigger. I'm gonna hook up a quick sequence so you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, so right now I've got it set to gate mode. Let's hear what it sounds like with a longer gate. And if I shorten the gate, so with the gate a little bit shorter, you hear a lot more of those percussive elements. And of course you can change those. I think it sounds better when you're running a baseline not to have the envelope that affects the pitch going very much. but that's of course up to you. If we, I'm just gonna play with the decay knob so you can hear what that sounds like. I'm gonna turn it off and go back into triggering mode. You also have a high pass filter that's activated by this button here. You don't have any control over the cutoff frequency. It's set to 30 Hertz. So it's basically gonna remove the super low tones. Those frequencies are frequently removed or tamed in post-processing. And it's more of a feel than a tone. I'm not even sure if it's gonna come out in the video. Um, in my studio, I can hear a difference when I use it. off and 
turned on. Let's go to the other drive type. Not quite as noticeable. I can hear it when I turn the decay up. So those super low sub frequencies can take up a lot of headroom in your recording. If you haven't done a lot of recording or used EQs in your recording, taming the low end is really, really important. This is the first module that I've seen that has a feature like that. I haven't done extensive recording with it, but I think it might make mixing a little bit easier. This patch point is envelope out. You can take the envelope and use it as a modulation source for other things. The most obvious use for this for me is to use it to duck the bass, and you can do that by inverting it with this button here. So I'm gonna set up a quick bass patch using the same bass line that I was playing before, but we'll have a VCO playing it, and we'll use this to duck the bass. Okay, so I've got a bass line set up. This is what the kick sound is going to sound like. And then the bass sound with no kick. I'm using my mini mod to generate the bass sounds going through Quadrax and the Quad VCA by IntelliGel. This is what the kick and the bass line sound like together. And now, let's go ahead and plug in our inverse envelope into the Quad VCA so that we can duck the bass, and this is what it sounds like. on our red drive type. So you can see it's just super easy to get your bass lines pumping with this thing. The last of these four buttons is this lock button. If you push it, what it does is it creates a pitch lock and you can lock in whatever pitch you're at and it transforms the pitch knob into an octave switcher. So that way you can tune your battering ram to whatever is going on and then just be able to change up and down octaves. So I'm gonna lock it in there. But another really great feature is this store recall button. What it does is it creates a temporary save, so that way you can save whatever settings you're working with and then use the knobs to create movements in the song and then immediately go back to where you were before. So let's say I like this kick sound and I wanna store it. I'll hold this for a few seconds, it'll blink, it might be hard with the camera. But I just saw it blink a couple times. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and move these knobs wherever I want. And play around in a performance. And it immediately goes back to where it was before. And to find your original settings, you just turn your knobs and you'll see it'll blink when I get to where it was. And when you turn them all back, the light will go off. And it's still saved, so you can still It's really fun to play around with that. Lastly, there's advanced settings where if you hold the store recall button and push any of these four buttons to get to the advanced settings, 
and do things like increase the pitch range and things like that. You can also use the select bus protocol to store 16 different presets. The power rail of bus boards can be used to transmit information between modules and the battery RAM can be a receiver for that. What that does mean though, is that you'll need a transmitting module. Harley Quinn's Context, which is another shock mount module can be used for that. It's not really necessary, but if you're interested in saving settings and you really like saving presets, they built it in for you. So you can turn that on and off. You can change the pitch range to five octaves and you can also change the amplitude of the envelope. So lastly, I'm gonna make a rhythmic patch with the clock upon MK2 and the Kaono modular Skippy and we'll hear it with some other percussive sounds. Okay, I've got some rhythm set up. I'm gonna be going, I'm gonna be using the clock upon MK2 to create a groove and the hex inverter mutant hi-hats, battering rams, obviously the kick drum, and I'm gonna be using the Kaona modular Skippy as a trigger sequencer to trigger some other percussive sounds using a Roland TR-8S. So here we go. So there you have it, that's the battering ram. I hope you liked this video. Let me know what you think in the comments sections. I'm really curious to hear what your favorite kick drum module is and how you think the battering ram stacks up. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll also put affiliate links in the description to Perfect Circuit so you can pick up the battering ram and throw me a little tip in the process. I really appreciate that. It's a great way to support my channel at no additional cost to you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And let's use that store recall function.